That's the dumbest looking color scheme. It's retro. No, it's not. He wasn't purple and aqua blue in the original movies. In the video game he was. You know what retro Jason is? He has a bag on his head. Can I say how much I love Baghead Jason? You can. You can. I love Baghead Jason. He's my favorite. He's my favorite Jason. He's got all the traps. Jack, what are we talking about? We are talking about Friday the 13th colon the game. The game that I had no idea I would actually kind of like. It's a, a multiplayer online only yep. game that follows the themes and stories of Friday uh, of the 13th. a horror movie series, and I'm not typically a big horror movie guy. Right. And here's the baffling part, is it really works. It is by far the best video game that is an adaptation of a movie ever to exist, outside, of course, of Total Recall for the NES. Big way, Total Recall? Because it's so forgettable? So in Friday the 13th, the game, uh, you play as either Jason uh, or a camp counselor. As Jason. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to murder everything. Yes. And as the counselor, your job is just to not die. <laughs> you need to get out alive. Yes. Yeah. It's a, I, I don't, I, this has a name. They've done it a few times. Lopsided multiplayer game. What is it called? It's like, you got the one powerful guy and then a bunch of less powerful people running around. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to call it unbalanced because I think they very carefully did balance it, but it's just balanced for one versus seven. Right, right, right. Well, no, and I mean, Jason is an unstoppable murder machine, so he kind <laughs> of has to be in the game. <laughs> They've done a really good job of, like, staying true to the movies. Yeah. So, so, so you play as Jason or the counselors. Playing as Jason, how does that work? Okay, so as, as Jason, your only job is to kill everyone. Yeah. And you have a slew of powers that help you accomplish your goal. And the, the overarching theme of a lot of our discussion is how true the game developers were to the movies and how they used the movie's powers and tones and themes to influence gameplay decisions to the benefit of the game. Part of Jason's power is he has the ability to sense where the counselors are, where if a counselor is afraid enough, they show up bright red in your vision. Or if they're in a house, the house shows up bright red. Uh, Jason has the power to teleport. He can teleport from one side of the map to the other side. And I know what you're saying, Jason can't teleport. Or can he? We all know he does. They had a, they had a robot chicken joke about this. Yeah. Where he just like sprints really fast. <laughs> well, the, and the, like that's how they make the movie make sense for gameplay, where it does seem in the movies that Jason can either move incredibly fast or teleport. Yeah. So they give you the ability to teleport. Um, the other ability, which again is not necessarily an official power, is uh, what I'm dubbing Evil Dead Vision. And what is <laughs> what is that even called? A uh, shift. 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 Uh, it's it's Evil Dead Vision, where where you kind of go ghost and you can move relatively fast and and pop up right next to someone. Well, that's 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 kind of like how when Jason, who doesn't run, chases somebody, he still manages to keep up with them. That's mm -hmm. that power is representative of that <laughs> feature of the movies. Oh yeah. It's like how come how come she's not just outrunning this guy? Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Jason, you cum sack prick.
and Jason's most powerful power-up. And also incredibly true to the movie, he has the ability to turn his evil music off. <laughs> For the gotchas. Basically, they figured out how to incorporate a jump scare into gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. Uh, one, of, one of the mechanics of the game is as Jason gets closer, his evil, scary music gets louder and louder. So as Jason, you can turn that off, sneak up on someone for the woo! Right. Oh, I had the best moment like that. Yeah. Uh, counselor was was running from me, and he was he was he wasn't going into the cabin through the window because you can climb through the windows to get in. He was going through the front door. So he opens the front door. When he opened the door, I I used that shift power. I zoomed into the house. Uh -huh. So the counselor, you know, he doesn't see me. He walks into the cabin, shuts the door behind him, he barricades the door, he turns around, and there I am. I got a genuine jump scare out of another player playing as Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and what Rich just described here is what makes Friday the 13th the game so exceptional. They have done an amazing job of setting up the pieces to make a moment from the movie happen in a game. Yeah. 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 What do you like with your french fries? Mustard. Mmm. The other, the other thing with Jason that they realize is that those movies, mm. they're not atmospheric horror movies. Those movies are all about the gory spectacle. Yep. And there are a fair amount of really fun just kills. And it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Like, while you're doing this, other people can be running away, but you don't care because this fucking awesome kill is going on. And to me, like, that's that's perfect balance. Uh, you, as Jason, you do get bonus points for using different kills. Variety, yeah. And so you want to use them to get more points, and because they look amazing, <laughs> but like you said, while you're doing that, other people could be getting away. Um, not, and this doesn't even include all the environmental kills that are. Oh, the great. environmental ones are some of the good ones, like the birdbath one. <sighs> Beautiful. 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 So they got that right from the movies. Just oh, yeah. the spectacle of the kill. Yep. The splatter house effect. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's great. Ah! <laughs> 
So when you play as the counselor, it's a very different game, and you have a ton of options. Yes. Uh, to defend yourself against Jason, and more importantly, to get out alive. Uh, so as the counselor, all you're looking to do is you're looking to escape. Mm -hmm. Basically, there, there are four ways to defeat Jason. There is escape in a vehicle. There is call the cops and escape on foot. There is kill Jason, which is incredibly difficult. And there is last the entire 15 minutes of the match, which just never happens. <laughs> never. Never ever happens. Here's, here's where we get into a lot of the fun of the game, is as a counselor, you are going into cabins and searching through drawers, looking on the ground, looking for all of these pieces so you can put together the puzzle that is the car or the boat or the phone box. Yeah. Because to get out on the car, you need to repair the battery, right. you need to fill it with gas, then someone needs to find the car keys and start the car, and then you actually have to drive it to the exit. Right. And while you are scrounging through these houses, Jason is looking for you. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's this perfect risk reward tension. If if you run in the game, uh, you lose stamina and Jason can see you or can see a noise cue without using a special power. Yeah. So do you want to run to that house to quickly search it? Or do you want to slowly walk so Jason might not see you? It, it has a built-in tension to it. You know what the most tense thing in the game is? Hmm. The most tense thing in the game is finding either the gas or the battery in the first house you walk into. Because mm. then you're left with a dilemma. It's like, Jason has traps he can put down. Yeah. And where, you know, if you step on them, the bear trap goes off your leg, you lose health, and Jason hears the bear trap go off from wherever he is. Yeah, yeah. And so you know early in the game there's no trap by the car yet. So do you sprint over by the car to put that gas in? But if you do that, what if the car is the first place Jason looks? Because that's a hot spot. Yeah, of course, of course. It's that dilemma once you find the gas or the battery early. If I do yeah. it now, I can get to the car without traps. Right. No, and it's not... The, the, the glorious thing is it's not just pure number strategy. Because Jason is a real person. Yeah. So there is there is a, a a human dice roll in this that you can never account for. Mm -hmm. Like, is is this Jason the kind of Jason that will set traps by the car, or is he looking for people in the houses already? Well, if he's not an idiot, he set traps by that car. Well, of course, you are. <laughs> but th the point is, you never know where Jason is going to be because he's another person making people mistakes, doing unexpected things. Mm -hmm. Jason, why are you in the house? <laughs> At this point in the game, you should be laying traps by the car. Why are you killing me already? <laughs> could, it could, you know what? It could be a Jason strat. He's going for an easy kill early of, on before you've had a chance to find proper items or weapons to get course. away. He, it's, he's hunting the most dangerous game. I love it. <laughs> I love it, Rich. Make them suffer like they deserve to die, Jason. Make them suffer also as a counselor so not only are you looking for puzzle pieces but you're looking for ways to defend yourself against jason yeah there are melee items that can stun or hurt jason uh there are ways to distract him like firecrackers you can throw a firecrackers on the ground and that stuns jason or you know yeah distracts him and so there's all of these moving pieces and you're just trying basically all you're trying to do is get on one path Okay, my my character is has a really good repair stat. I'm going to look for things to repair. That's what my character is. I'm going to get on that path. And all of the characters, this is important, have very different stats. Yes, yes. Uh, like like uh, Tiffany, Tiffany. She's she's quiet and she's fast. She can't repair jack shit and she's weak. So she's good for, like as a scout to run around to look for the parts mm -hmm. to bring them back to the car. Sure. And then she can drop them by the car, and then the slower, nerdier character can come by to install the parts in the car. Meanwhile, the big bruisers who have the high strength with the bats can protect that person. Like, there's there's a strategy with who you choose. <laughs> Absolutely. You Absolutely. And uh, and it's it's amazing because you can be in a group and all know what you're doing and have your strategy, and as soon as Jason shows up, the whole thing goes to shit. <laughs> Because you freak out. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh my god, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. What the fuck? I lost my shot. Well, that's a nice jump suit. Stand still, stand. I got yeah. him again. Let's get him get someone. <laughs> to the camp, to the camp, to the camp. It makes all the difference in the world in this game, which just people know what they're doing or they're not. It's what group yeah. you're with. Mm -hmm. If you're with the right group, you're probably going to give Jason a very hard time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, oh, I, I see a lot of people on, like, the discussion threads for the game and whatnot. Jason's so overpowered. No, he's not. He's really not. If you're with a good team, yeah. team, a team, you are going to get out of there so easy and... Yeah. Jason's just gonna be frustrated while you're hitting him with bats. And I cannot stress this enough. You almost almost need a mic. Oh no no. You need a mic. Well here's 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 where the team where here's where the mic is important though. Yeah. Like somebody could have without without a mic could have the fuse in their inventory, no idea where the fuse box is running around, and nobody else knows what's going on. Right. Somebody somebody on the other side of the map could have the fuse and you could waste ten minutes. You know where the phone box is. You know where the phone is, and no. I'm looking for that fuse. I can't find it. <laughs> Teamwork is incredibly important, which is why I want something like a uh, a quick speak wheel to make communicating with people easier. Because not everyone has a microphone. Not everyone uses their microphone, and there is or also. Or if you do, not everyone listens to you. That's that's also true. Well, and like some people have really quiet mics, some people don't speak the same language as you. So having something like a quick communication wheel would solve a lot of these problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are, there's some nonverbal communication. You know, for example, when uh, another player has the battery or the gas, you can clearly see that they have that. And so you can kind of adjust your strategy, but maybe they have a different idea. You know, maybe they get to the car and they drop it. Do they want me to repair it? Are they just dropping it to look for other things? Are we going to repair right. it later? What do you want to do, person? <laughs> other people, Rich. Have you ever have you ever dropped keys by the car? Mm -hmm. Just because you don't know if you're going to be around the car by the time it get fixed. Maybe you die with the keys. That's not good. Right. So maybe you drop the keys by the car. You ever seen another player just walk by and take them and just go off? Yes. Yeah. What What are you doing? Yeah. What you, they're They're by the car. You leave them they're, by the car. No, they're looking out for themselves. That's the cutthroat nature of the game because they know. Mm -hmm. You know, you're maybe you're looking out for everyone else. That's yeah. why you put the keys down near the car. That other person is thinking, if I grab the keys, they can't leave without me. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Just like what hap what happened in the movie. <laughs> can't leave without me. I got, I got the, the keys. keys. Yeah. I have a spot in the car. Oh, that's it's it's the it's it's some of the mo what what do you call that like social engineering moments, where where there is there's three of you there, but you're at the two seater. Yeah. And you know. Yeah. That, Somebody's gonna get left behind. And no one has the keys yet, and so then it's just like a. <laughs> I'll look over. Th no, you guys look over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying right here by this car. Oh god. I think I put that on right. The confidence of these developers. You know, like, the, something we talk about a lot with other games is, like, gaming in a tube. Is other developers really want you to have an experience. Yeah. And so, rather than let you find the experience yourself as a player, they put you in a tube this is the experience we are forcing you to go on. Exactly. This is a dark, quiet tube, and when you, after you walk 15 steps, a loud noise will happen, and that will scare you. Then you have to hit the X button mm -hmm. to jump under the thing in this cutscene. But the pure confidence of these developers to lay the pieces in place and say, you guys find it. No. You know, and, and it's it's all in these little moments. Like, there are moments when you are hiding in the woods and Jason doesn't see you and walks past you. Keep quiet. Does he see me? 
And then maybe he stops. Maybe he's going to teleport away. Or maybe he'll turn towards you and look. And it is the freakiest fucking moment. Yeah, oh, I, hiding in the house it happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you happen to spawn in near one of, like, the major objectives. Like, if you're, if you spawn in next to the house with the phone, you know there's a 75% chance Jason will be there in about five seconds. <laughs> Absolutely. And then so you just jump under a fucking bed, stay as quiet as you can, <laughs> and, and hope he doesn't decide to stick around too long and look for someone. So, you spawn next to the car or the phone. Yeah. Jason finds you right away, and within the first minute of the game, you're dead. One of the problems with the game is, you know, eight, eight people get into a server. One of them is Jason. If you die within the first minute, you kind of just have to stick around until the game's over, or you have to completely leave the server and find another server. Yeah. And that could be that could be you know twenty minutes before the game's over if you die in the first minute. I don't blame anybody for leaving right after they after they're killed. I don't blame them, but it makes it very hard to keep a good group together. Yes, and it and you know like it's just a dice roll sometimes where you die right away because you don't have any items and Jason happens to jump in on you. Something that I would love is a little more incentive to stick around. Yeah. The the there's two incentives they have right now. If one of the players calls in Tommy Jarvis, you have a chance to respawn and get a second chance as Tommy Jarvis. Two, if you stick around for the completed match, you get experience points. And that leads to CP. What does CP stand for? I don't know. So, it's, it's shit you use to buy perks. The the currency points or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It leads to CP, which is what you can use to buy points or extra kills or stuff in the game. And so you want to stick around to get that experience to unlock new characters and new stuff in the game. But it can just be really boring. You have to ask yourself, you know, is 20 minutes really worth 500 XP? Exactly. Which translates to about 50 CP. It's, it's, it's nothing. So I would love some more incentives. Here's my idea. This is, my, this is my pitch, game developers. You get to be a spirit. You get to be a ghost. And you don't get to do a lot, but you can, you can roam around the game and you can affect stuff like maybe you could turn on and off lights. <laughs> now, now, listen, wait, I know what you're saying. So... Like, let's say you know where the car keys are. You can, like, help other players find stuff, and then if the remaining players live, you get bonus experience points. We talked about this being, like, a perfect adaptation of the movies, and yeah. that does not fit in anywhere. I know! Here's, all right, here's here's my idea, and it's, it's, it, it's not perfect, but it's a little something. Okay. Let me go into the menus and like buy and sell perks or or take a look at my counselors and and play around with well maybe I want to try giving sure. this counselor the the thick skin perk. Yeah, yeah. Play around with that for a few minutes. Okay. That would be nice. Sure. That'd be pretty good. That'd be pretty good. Just, I mean just let me go into the menus of the game and change things. I mean it's no being a helpful ghost, but sure, I mean yes, I guess it's a good idea. Here's 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 one of the major problems with this game. Yeah. The player base. Uh oh. There's there's a lot of fucking assholes that play this game, and they play it just to troll. Damn, damn. Only to troll. This there's, is the problem. There's several different types of asshole. Okay. There's the guy who's friends with the person who's playing as Jason. Yep. So then you have Jason with a counselor helping him out who will go into the cabin you're hiding in and open the door for Jason. Yep. Or he'll hit you with a machete as the counselor. Yep. That's that's jerk number one. Jerk number two is the I found a glitch in the map guy. Mm. I'm going to glitch myself up on the roof. 
Jason can't get me up here. And then everyone, Jason and the players who are already dead waiting in the lobby are all gonna have to fucking sit around for 20 minutes because this jackass is just standing there on the roof yep. of a house. Or right. hiding under a bridge because he glitched under the bridge. Rather than play the game. You just deny Jason points. You get nothing extra for that. What a dickhead. What a dickhead. People are jackasses. <laughs> and unfortunately, and this, and this is always true for every game, a multiplayer game is only as good as the other people you play with. Come get a taste of this Chad dick, bitch. Jason, get a taste of this Chad him. dick. Looking for this Chad dick, you ugly motherfucker. Get it for that dick, aren't you? There's a lot of like like ten year olds who play this game for some reason, and I don't care. Yeah. But this ten year old playing as Jason, uh, it was like down to the last two counselors, and uh, one of them was Tommy Jarvis. Tommy Jarvis is one of the major ingredients for killing Jason. Sure. This is ultra rare way to win, yeah. and so the kid playing as Jason's like, "Do you want to see who the death is like? Let's let's kill Jason. And I'll let you kill me. I'll let, I'll let you kill Jason." Oh, okay, cool. And so you need Tommy Jarvis, and then a female counselor needs to be wearing Jason's sweater in Jason's shack. Mm -hmm. So he's like, "Come to Jason's shack. I'll meet you there, and I'll let you kill me." Oh, cool. And so you know. Jason led them to the shack, and then before they can go in to, to get the sweatshirt, he just killed them both. I love it. Meet me by the shack. I'll let you kill me. Hack, hack, hack. <laughs> <laughs> and that is trolling. But here's why I love it. Because it's also, like, very in theme with horror movies. <laughs> Where, where, you know what, you see people do that in horror movies all the time. They try to make a deal with the killer. Okay, no, no, I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a deal. Let's just do this, and I'll walk away. And then the killer goes, all right, and just kills him anyway. Yeah, right, right. That's such a horror movie thing. <laughs> so I love it. Basically, every single patch that I have seen has included fixing a glitch area. Hey, we fixed that rock that people are up, that, uh, that people go on that Jason can't get. Hey, we fixed the bridge that people are under. Hey, we fixed the roof. And they keep finding new ones. And they, they keep finding new ones. Uh, un unfortunately, there are a lot of glitches in the game. Like when you, you kill a counselor by punching him through the... You lift him up, yeah. and then you punch him through the chest. Yeah. And then Jason rips his fist out, and he, he, he lets go of the corpse, and the corpse is still hanging there in midair. Or even worse, there are some times where Jason will kill a counselor and then is unable to let go of them. Yeah. So he can't kill anyone else because there's a counselor dangling in front of him. I've seen that a few times. Oh, I was spectating when that happened once. Yeah. He had to walk all the way to the other end of the map to walk into the water. Oh. Which which reset it and let them go, oh, and then Jesus. he was able to drown them. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, one of the problems with all these bugs, any, any buggy game, is you're never quite sure if you're doing something wrong or if the game is broken. I had a, a, a awful, embarrassing situation in which I ended up next to a car, and the car was completely empty. Jason was chasing people who were in the car, I just happened to roll up in it. So I say to myself, I'm going to get in this car and I'm going to escape. Fuck those other guys. Yeah. I get in the car. And usually when there's an empty car, it means that Jason has smashed it. So you need to restart the car. Yeah. So I get in the car and I hit A to start the car. And I don't see the little starting animation. Yeah. I just leave the car. Oh, fuck. The game must have glitched. So I get back in the car, hit A again, and I don't see the starting animation. I just get out of the car again. And I think to myself, this is an awful bug that has happened in yeah. the game. So I just leave the because car. Because there are so many bugs. There are so many bugs. So I leave the car and I end up getting killed by Jason. And as soon as I'm killed, my uh, my speakers are flooded with all the other players yelling at me because the car was already started. <laughs> I didn't need to start it. I just needed to drive away in it. But I had assumed it was a bug because the game's so buggy. Yeah. A little embarrassing for me. <laughs> 
But, but the fact that you ex you just expected it to be a bug because it's so common. Here's, you know what my first experience with the game was? Hmm. My very, the very first thing that happened when I turned this game on. What? I start a match. Yeah. I'm playing as one of the counselors. I'm playing as Chad. Okay. And I'm out in the woods. And I'm, oh, okay. And I'm walking up. I'm walking up this little hill out in the woods. Yeah. And then I get to the top of the hill. And I keep going up. I actually, I was actually slowly walking up a non-existent hill. I, I was eventually floating like 50 feet above the ground and Jason's running around under me. He can't do anything. And that's that was my first experience with the game, Jack. Yep. It's a buggy, buggy game. And then there's the constant... Uh, crashing constant in a lengthy session the game will freeze on me on average four times yep. completely freeze and you have to restart you know yep. control alt delete to get out of the game that happens um servers suddenly just kicking everyone you're in the you're in the middle of a great match yep. a fucking great match and then just oh it's frozen yep. i'm not in a great match anymore or server just kicked jason so you win i guess yeah it's got some problems that need addressing. This game, it feels unfinished. Yes. It, it, this game feels like it needed about six more months. At least. At, At least six more months. Um, fix all the bugs. Yeah. Give us some more fucking maps. And there are only three maps. Yeah. And I know them so well at this point. I don't. I don't need. I don't need to even worry about finding a map in a drawer. I know. I pretty much always know about where I am. Yep. Not just more maps. It needs more stuff. Like we need more options for escape because after you've played the game 10, 15 hours as a counselor, you you know your paths so well that like the joy of discovery is gone. Where okay, I know I'm going to do this. I know I'm going to do this. I know I'm going to do this. Well, you know, you know where the objectives tend to spawn too so you don't even have to worry about that so much yeah yeah and and so like we just need more things and we need a better player but so ba like basically mm -hmm. what we need is uh we need uh, a, a bigger team of developers to fix all the bugs yeah and another team of developers to add more content into the game and to get a better player base it actually they should reduce the price and along with reducing the price, they should release it on more systems so we can get a bigger player base. So, ba like, they need to do more and charge less, <laughs> is basically... <laughs> how, about, how about that single-player campaign that they delayed the game for that is nowhere to be seen? That would probably get you some more sales. I'm, I'm kind of doubtful we're ever going to see it, too. Yeah. Which is a shame. It would be great to be able to practice as Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that would stop some of these people who rage quit uh, literally 10 seconds into the match because they didn't get to be Jason. That happens every match. So every match starts with this little cutscene. And in the cutscene, we get our... Fr and no one knows who Jason is yet. And in our cutscene, we get a glimpse of Jason. And because every player gets to choose what Jason they would want to be, in the cutscene, sometimes you know whether you're going to be Jason or not. And without a doubt, all the time, as soon as that Jason is revealed, you get a little notification, some asshole left the game. Yeah, at least one. Yeah. At least. Because they Sometimes wanted, more. Because they wanted to be Jason. They're Jason players. I saw one in a forum once. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jason player. You fucking scumbag. That's not how it works. That's not how That's it works. That's not how it's designed to work. And to be frank... You are also then missing 60% of what makes the game so special. Like, playing as a counselor, going through those strategies, is what really sets the game apart. Like, all the things you can do as a counselor is what makes the game so special. Yeah. It's, admittedly, it's way more fun to play as Jason. Jason gets boring after a while. Sure. I, I would argue that the whole game gets boring after a while. But it's still really fun to murder people. <laughs> this this game has held my attention for a shockingly long time. Longer than it should have. I'm still playing this game. Yeah? And I've been playing it more than you have. You have been? Yeah. I'm at about 40. I'm at about 40 hours. I'm over 100. 
here's here's my thing with the game. It hasn't gotten boring. Uh-huh. I'm still enjoying it. I still love it because it has those moments that pop up that are much like the movies. Yeah. Like it has those scary, shocking moments. What it has become is formulaic for me. I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And you know when a bad game is about to happen. You know when it's set up where, like, oh, okay, I'm not going to win, and here's why I know I'm not going to win. And you just wait. Oh, the four seater spawned right next to the fuse box. Jason only has this one area that he really needs to worry about defending. You know, that's going to be a boring clusterfuck. Yep. I still think it's a very good game. Give me another map. Give me another. Give me, give me two more maps. Three, two or three. Fuck! I'll just give me uh, give me the same three maps, but another route of escaping. Ooh, add in another strategic element, and I'm back in. Give me a give me a, a Jason X DLC with some spaceship maps. <gasps> now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking, Rich. <laughs> No, overall, it's just it's just such a good game. I mean, one of the mechanics in the game is occasionally your character will trip. <laughs> well, fear, fear. We didn't even talk about fear. This is the thing. Like they they've incorporated fear as a quantifiable state <laughs> <laughs> that affects your gameplay. Like strategically, it is to Jason's benefit to. Just go to an isolated area of the map. There might not even be any consoles around just so you can destroy the generator so the lights go out, mm-hmm. so people get more afraid, so their stamina goes down quicker, recharges slower, and they show up easier yep. in your in your vision. Yep. Making, making them more afraid means that they're easier to kill, and as a counselor, if you... If you become so afraid, you actually lose the ability to use your items. You lose the ability to see your map. Uh, you trip more often, and you know, like Jason is not as fast as the counselors, but the counselors lose stamina and they can trip, which is just like that's a classic yeah. slasher movie yeah. trope. But like, they found a way to turn that into a viable gameplay mechanic. <laughs> Jack, Rich. do you recommend Friday the 13th, the game? Even with all of the problems we've talked about, the bugs, the bad player base, the lack of variety, I 100% recommend Friday the 13th, the game. Jack, if you weren't somebody who could justify it as a business expense, would you recommend Friday the 13th, the game for $40? Yes. Yeah, I I believe that you will get at least twenty to forty hours of good times. If they add to that with bonus content, if they can fix some stuff, it's double worth it. But like forty dollars, you know, generally speaking, a triple A game is sixty dollars. Yeah, and you're looking to get twenty to forty hours of gameplay usually, right? That's the standard. Yeah. You will get that and more. I can see this being hard to recommend to somebody on the fence because it's $40 Mm -hmm. and you only get three maps and there is not a single player component. I can, and, and there's so many bugs and there's so many crashes. I can understand why you wouldn't want to buy this game yet. For some reason, I still recommend it. It I'm not works. a horror person. Yeah. I'm not a multiplayer person. It is fucking riddled with bugs. Yep. But when you do find a good match and a good group, yep. it's really fun. E- it needs to be fixed. Of course. It, it needs to be fucking fixed and patched, and it needs a little bit more content. Yep. But it's fun. What we do have is fun. It just doesn't feel finished. It's it's that it's it's that thing where 
e- heck, even if you lose and it's a good loss. <laughs> Right. Like, like, you do your best to to get away from Jason, and you're right near the exit, but Jason uses his power, and he gets you, and he does the kill. You go, ah, good game, Jason. Yeah. You, you got me. The 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 peaks of this game, you know, like, because there will be peaks. There, there will be shit groups that you're in, and you're not having a good time. Fuck, there'll be good groups. They'll, they'll, there are times when I've won, but I didn't really feel like I've done anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're walking around you haven't found anything useful and then the car just happens to drive by you and they're like get in exactly yeah. and then I win and I didn't do anything and I didn't contribute <laughs> and you just go well fuck and like even that's a bad experience but the highs of this game are so high that it brings everything up it's okay. so worth it Okay. it's so fucking worth it but I understand why you would be reluctant, and there are issues. Of course, there are issues. Uh, here's one of the big issues, and here's what I want to end the episode on. Okay. Rich, I want you and I to have a, a sit-down conversation with the game developer about rebinding keys. It's a fucking PC game! Why can't you rebind fucking keys? That's the reason you fucking play PC games! Because you... Why? I don't fucking play with WASD. The fucking keyboard's all over the fucking place. I I usually rebind everything to this little separate number pad I've got. I can't do that without fucking making a fucking separate auto hotkey script for this game. It's yep. bullshit. Yep. You know that nice mouse that you have with all the little buttons that are easy to press on your mouse? Can't rebind them. Fuck! Can't rebind them. Hey, do you use a controller but want to use push to talk? Too bad, you can't. You, there is no push to talk option on a controller, Rich. <sighs> yeah, there are issues. <laughs>